On today's menu, I'm going to be walking you through everything I'm thinking and doing while playing the HE162. This is a jet fighter in the German tree at 6.0 battle rating, and it is honestly pretty difficult to play. It is not noob friendly in the slightest, and it is going to take a little bit of practice to actually uh, extract the full potential out of this plane. I'll get back to that in a minute, but for the sake of not missing out on anything here, you see me with an F-82 in front of me and an F-2G. I kind of turn off to the side and level out into a straight line because getting speed is going to be a lot more important than continuing to climb, and I don't mind giving my 6 to the F-2G because I'm just going to outrun this guy in the end. And as long as I just stick this straight line here and actually pick up a little bit of airspeed, uh, I am going to just start outrunning him, and you see me doing that right now. Once he started closing quickly, I increased my angle even more so, so that he kind of gets right behind me, and therefore he runs out of closure, and now I'm just kind of running away from him. I go into a shallow climb just because I'm faster than him, and I can, and once he turns off, I'm going to kind of ease my way back into him. I'm not going to turn straight into him because he might be faking it and therefore he'll turn right back into me. I kind of end up flying par parallel with him to test the waters and see what he's actually planning on doing. If he's going to turn into me by now, he would have, and as you see on screen, he, end up, he ended up doing just that. He turns back into me, and it is a very good thing I didn't fully commit to turning 180 degrees back around after him. The F-82 is also coming in. The F-82 is pretty damn fast in a straight line, but I am a jet in the end of the day, and all I have to do is fly in a straight line, and I will beat both of these guys in a drag race. And I'm just going to continue doing this until something actually happens, whether they're going to get bored, they're going to spread out, get a little bit of separation, I get a lot of distance, enough distance to comfortably turn around and maintain speed while doing so. But what ends up happening first is the F2G just gets bored, and understandably so. You unfortunately have to play the scene pretty damn passive at times to actually get any use out of it. Sure, on low fuel loads, especially minimum fuel loads, it is actually pretty damn good at turning. I'm going to showcase that a little bit later in the video, but with landing flaps down, this plane actually pulls surprising amount of angle of attack. The problem is, is that there's two of them here, and if I start turning with one guy, I'm going to be very slow and very defenseless against the second guy. So now that the F2G has turned around, I turn back in toward the F82. I do it while diving, and Jink and Evade his shots last second. I dive to get more speed, and therefore I'm going to be a harder target to hit, and I can outturn the F82 all day long. So I go vertical there on that first turn to slow myself down. By slowing myself down, I make my turn circle tighter coming back down around on him and therefore I'm able to pull inside of him get a critical hit in and now he's on his way back down he doesn't have the energy to pull his nose back up after me here so I kind of lead turn him to make sure that he doesn't just dive away and get a lot of separation I know that I'm safe from him pulling his nose in for another shot and now I'm gonna put the landing flaps down uh, and I'm gonna try to work my way inside of his turn here despite me being out in front of him going into that turn I actually end up getting almost a shot in but I do end up slotting in behind him and I think that kind of pays tribute to the turning capability of the 162 on landing flaps. I am on a pretty heavy fuel load right now at least relatively speaking for what this plane is. Anything above 10 minutes of fuel you're going to greatly lose turning performance but on some of these bigger maps you really don't have much of a choice but to take 20 minutes of fuel and so that's why you see me doing it here. I would also like to note that the HE162 is a lot more effective in a small match. The classic dreaded 6.0 battle rating 6 vs 6 lobbies, the 162 actually thrives in compared to a 16 vs 16 or 12 vs 12 lobby. And why is that? Well, with more players means you have more distractions, more angles, more turns that you have to make, and more to deal with at one time, and that ultimately just ends up meaning you're not going to be going as fast, as easily, as you can when you have a lot less targets to manage. Now that I've killed the F-82, I am now turning back in, looking for that F-2G, because the F-2G is actually pretty dangerous in the hands of a competent player to 162. Planes like the P-51H and the F-2G are going to be actually a pretty difficult fight if the opponent knows what they're doing. Very often times they won't though, and on my way over here I find an F-4U-4B. Very dangerous plane in a head-on scenario. I'm not even going to try a head-on, I kind of fly offset to him there to avoid his guns, 
and last second jink out of the way of his shot. Now I'm going to go up and over. I know I can just kind of climb over him. I went into this fight with like 700 kilometers of airspeed. And not only that, I know that I just straight up out turn the F4U4. And so I end up looping back down around him. He's kind of stalling out at this point. He's diving down in desperation of getting some speed back, but it's just too late. He's too slow. He's going to be too easy of a shot and now he's burning up as well. The F2G seems to have caught fire somewhere along the line. I'm sure you guys saw it, I just missed it. And so that means he's gonna be a pretty easy kill, but just to be sure, the F2G does have a pretty good damage model in the sense that it's rather tanky and still performs pretty well with damage to the plane. I'm not gonna get too aggressive with it. I'm still gonna play my speed that I have over him. I had altitude as well, and now that he's lost his altitude and all of his speed, now I'm gonna put my flaps down and I'm gonna start pulling around inside of him here. Yes, you're not supposed to have your flaps down while you're rate fighting. I'm not actually trying to rate fight him. I'm just trying to pull into him. And he's out of energy completely. His engine's pretty shot, if I had to imagine. And not only that, but the F2G just doesn't really turn very well, period. One thing in common with pretty much every fight that you see me getting in is that I'm entering with a lot of speed. The reason I enter with a lot of speed is because with this plane, the speed is a lot more important than the altitude. Worst case scenario, you can always just kind of dive away, or if you already have speed in the first place, you can just fly in a straight line and you're pretty much uh, completely defended against anyone that's trying to kill you. So even right now, for example, rather than going for an, an aggressive and steep climb, I'm more so going for a shallow climb here in a position that I'm still accelerating, but also getting a little bit of altitude. I see the F4U7 Corsair diving down on me, and so I know I'm going to have to pick up some speed here in a moment, but more importantly, I'm kind of getting a mix of both. I'm getting speed and altitude so that as he gets closer to me, I'm going to level out and I'm going to start flying in a straight line and then when he gets even closer the plan is to start diving down and that way I'm going to be going really fast on the way down, he's going to be going really fast and I'm going to kind of equalize our energy state. Right now he's got a lot more altitude than me and he's got a lot more speed than me and so the longer I can drag out his dive here the less energy he's going to have going back up if he tries to climb away. And now that he's pr getting pretty close, he's almost within gun range, you see me start a shallow dive. And again, I'm just trying to equalize the energy because now that he's out of altitude, he's not going to be able to get that back. He's going to have to start climbing up right now, but it's at the point where it's just too late. He has committed too long, and all, now all I have to do is dodge his shot. I'm going to keep the flaps put away to maintain my energy because flaps are going to kill my speed, and we don't want that right now. We'll get to there, but not right now. We force him to overshoot while not being too aggressive with our maneuvering because then I wouldn't have any speed to follow him. And now he's trying to get away, but he's realized that far too late, he just doesn't have the speed that he thought he would after coming out of that dive. And that's because I had a lot of speed to defend against him with when I was defensive flying there. And that also made him lose his speed. Now that he's out of altitude and he's slowed down significantly, I am now going to pull my flaps out because there's just no way he's going to get away from me and I'm okay with sacrificing the rest of my speed to be able to point my nose and get the angle in for the shot. I would also like you to note my fuel level now is at 8 minutes and this plane becomes a pretty lethal turn fighter, especially so with landing flaps at the sub 10 minute mark. I On the really small maps I like to just run min fuel from the get go, you know like the, the 8 minutes I believe it is, and I can't actually push that and sometimes have to RTB, sometimes not on the smaller maps, but a big winter map like this. I am taking the 20 minutes of fuel. You just have to keep that in mind when you have a lot of fuel left that you're not going to be getting the same turning performance as you would with lower fuel load. And so you got to be a little less aggressive with your turn fights and kind of play that passive fly in a straight line, hold your speed game for a little bit longer. The F8 F1B is a really good turn fighter, especially so because it bleeds its speed very quickly while turning, which means it stays behind you pretty easily while it turns against you, just because it's losing speed and slowing down fast, which means, you know, you're going to be kind of overshooting its turn if you hold your speed well. And so I got to keep that in mind going into this fight. I don't want to just full send landing flaps on him here. And so I'm kind of doing the same thing with the Corsair. I'm sort of just slowly reeling him in, getting him closer to me because the more altitude I can make him lose and the more he comes after me, the less energy he's going to be able to use against me when he's defending against my shots or if he tries to climb away from me after I make him overshoot. And so we finally do make him overshoot here and he's just too slow. He is committed to this fight for too long to be able to just go up. He could maybe just fly away right now, but 
I would inevitably catch him if he does, and so he's going to try to stick a turn fight of some kind. He's being a little bit too passive though with his maneuvering, and I'm able to just slot in behind him, track him pretty well. I realize right now he's going to fly into the ground, and so there's really no point in continuing to turn against him here. I also forgot to mention that you saw me at the beginning of that fight where the F8F and the AU-1 were spotted at the same time. I took the F8F somewhere that was the opposite direction of the AU-1 because I didn't want him to come in and third party me. I want to take these guys one at a time. And so once I had him all alone in a secret place, then we started to play around with him. I avoid the head-on with the AU-1. The MG-151s have decent damage, but the velocity is pretty slow. And so you're pretty much always going to be outranged and head on with American planes, so I recommend just not taking them up on it in the first place. It was a simple head on dodge, just kind of jink to the side and go up to avoid the shots, and now he's desperately trying to run back to the airfield. Unfortunately, I'm a plane that at 6.0 BR can reach 800 kilometers an hour in a straight line, and he's just never going to be able to outrun me. And so I'm just gonna run him down real quick, uh, drop my throttle once I get close enough as to not overshoot, because that's the, pretty much the only way he can kill me right now is force an overshoot, and I can completely counter that by slowing myself down and staying behind him. And I'm only gonna do that because I know that there's no other enemies around and I don't have to worry about getting third partied. So, in summary real quick, the HE-162 is pretty difficult to play, it's not easy to pick up, um, but if you're passive enough, if you're patient enough, you can exploit the advantages of having a jet engine at 6.0 and being able to go 800 kilometers an hour, as well as on lower fuel, get your landing flaps down and really get aggressive with your turns. Chris, looking at you, hope this helps. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see ya.